My name is Sarah Pellucci. I live in Hartford, Connecticut at Artspace, and I am a painter, an illustrator, and a graphic designer. I grew up in Tollins, Connecticut, and whenever I got bored, my mom would always tell me to go draw something, and usually I would end up drawing my dog. She was a golden retriever, and uh, she was just the most interesting thing in the room at all times. <laughs> So, uh, so that's really how I started um, doing pet portraits and things. I just, I was naturally good at drawing dogs because I drew my dog so often. And when I got to high school, I had a very encouraging art teacher. Um, he encouraged me to go to art school. So I went to the Hartford Art School at the University of Hartford. And I graduated with a degree in illustration and since, since I've graduated, I've been doing illustration and uh, pet portraits and graphic design. I do freelance graphic design um, and fine art. The inspiration for this body of work uh, was creation. I love creating things and, um, and I love drawing hands. People always said to me, oh, hands are so hard, but you know, I, I just love the challenge of it and um, I love all the things that hands can do. We can do so many things with our hands. And, and it started off as my own hands, my own hands that were playing the piano or knitting or whatever uh, the new thing was that I, that I was learning how to do. But, um, but I wanted it to be hands that were professionals, hands that were, these hands were made to, not made, but these hands were trained to make this one thing. And so I was able to hook up with the Hartford Symphony Orchestra and, uh, and get into their rehearsal space while they were playing. Um, it was such a great opportunity to be around all those amazing musicians and uh, to, to take reference shots of them. Um, I also have friends who are chefs and uh, potters and uh, fashion designers and for them to let me into their space as, as they're creating was really special to me. and. Um, and I think what they all do is amazing. As an artist, they, they all have their individual ways that they take something. They take materials, they take an instrument, and they turn it into uh, music and art and beautiful, amazing things. I would consider my style to be realistic. Um, also, to be figurative, there's there's hands in all the work, so I would consider that to uh, to be figurative, even though it's not the whole figure. Um, most of my work is realistic in nature. I just like painting things the way that they look. An artist that I've been influenced by um, since I was a kid is M. C. Escher. He plays with space and. Uh, I think that the way he does it is just fascinating. I've spent many days just staring at his work and um, he just bends perspective right in front of your eyes and it works, which is bizarre and fascinating to me. So, uh, and the tessellations that he, that he does where they just fit together just so and he made those before computers. <laughs> computers can do all that now, but he, was, he was phenomenal, so he was definitely, um, definitely one of my one of my favorite artists. I started oil painting in college, and after college, I I stopped for about ten years. I had continued to draw with pencils and pastels and paint with watercolor, but the oil paint uh, it takes a little more effort. You have the turpentine and the medium and the, the cleanup is a little bit um, messy. <laughs> but uh, in 2011, when I moved um, to Artspace in Hartford, 
I was surrounded by all these other artists uh, that were painting in oils and, and it rekindled my love for oil paint and I had the space to set up and you know leave it so I didn't have to keep cleaning up every day and um, so it was really I guess been about five years since I picked up oil painting again um, and as far as the hands go I in the past well, three years or so I started looking back at my body of work and noticed that there were hands in pretty much all of my pieces whether it was oil or watercolor or pencil or colored pencil or whatever it was there were always hands in the piece that were helping to tell the story so once I noticed that I was like well that's my favorite part of the painting anyway <laughs> so, so I took that and decided to um, to move the hands instead of instead of having them help to tell the story, they then became the story. My favorite painting is always going to be the next painting that I'm painting. It's so hard for me to pick a favorite because looking back at the painting, you're like, oh, well, mm, I should have done this and I can do, uh, I'm going to work on this a little bit more and, and I, can't, I can't leave it like that. But Starting a painting is my favorite part, <laughs> so it's always the next one. The next one's going to be my favorite. Um, but if I had to pick one, <laughs> uh, for the studies, I have in this, in this series I have the big final paintings and then I have some small studies that I've been doing. So um, for the studies, I think, I don't know if it would be my favorite painting, but it was the painting that I had the most fun doing. Uh, and it's the cello piece um, with the woman who's wearing a black and white striped shirt. And I just had so much fun with that. And the challenge of the light and shadow and the black and the white and the, um, the wrinkles in the fabric was a lot of fun for me. Um, so that was my, my favorite painting to paint. <laughs> And then as far as the, the larger paintings go, I think my favorite painting would have to be um, the potter. She's four feet by two feet, and she, she's a friend of mine. Her name is Avis Cherichetti, and she has uh, a pottery studio up in Granby, Connecticut called Honey Hill Pottery, and she's phenomenal. She's amazing. And so her hands are this big, and she has the most characteristic hands. They're really, they're really, they were really fun to paint. And plus, they're covered in clay, so they're really wet and messy and shiny, and um, and it really epitomizes what this series is about. It's about taking a lump of clay and turning it into something beautiful. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's a natural thing for an artist or for any person to go through cycles in life. And uh, for me, I certainly, when I started this series, I was all about it. I was so excited and I was taking reference shots of all my friends. And, um, and I was notified that I got this show and I was so excited. And then I think it was about a year ago, I was on this painting, it was um, the fly fishing piece, the f fly fisherman, he's tying a fly, and it's my largest piece yet, my largest piece to date, and uh, the largest one in the show, and I was stuck. I couldn't get past it, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, I couldn't get past it, I, I was so stuck and so frustrated that I felt like giving up, and um, so I took a break. I stopped painting it, I put it away, and uh, I, I started painting my dog. <laughs> my dog, Max, he's, um, he's pretty famous in Hartford. <laughs> Everybody stops and asks what kind of dog he is, because he's short and long. Um, by the way, he's German Shepherd and Basset Hound mix. <laughs> and, but he's so adorable, he's so photogenic. I have all of these amazing photos of him that I, I decided to start painting them. And, 
Uh, and I wanted to learn something new. I was being inspired by uh, James Gurney. James Gurney is the, uh, the creator of Dinotopia. It's this amazing fantasy book where dinosaurs and humans live together. He's phenomenal and prolific and he's a, a plain, plain air painter as well. So he was posting all these images in gouache and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try gouache and I'm gonna paint my dog in gouache. And gouache is a, um, it's like watercolor, but it's opaque. And watercolor is more transparent, so it's, it's a little more forgiving. You can kind of just paint over and over and over. Um, and so I, I did, I started doing these experiments with color and with this paint, and I had this new inspiration, um, which was my dog. <laughs> So I was painting, I was painting Max every day and, and having a great time doing it and it was just, it was what, it was exactly what I needed to get me back on track with the hands. So um, after a couple of weeks of painting Max, I said, okay, I'm going to try this again. I put back my, um, the fly fishing piece on the wall and I just went to town and <laughs> it just, it came back to me. I was like, I know what I need to do now. <laughs> but I think it's I think it's natural for artists to go through those cycles and and to put a series or a painting down and then come back to it later. And when you come back to it, you have new experiences and um, and new techniques to bring to it. The best thing about being an artist is that anything can happen. You have this blank canvas or a lump of clay or whatever your medium is and you can turn it into whatever you want. And I think that's amazing. I also think it's the worst thing about being an artist <laughs> because anything can happen. <laughs> it could be, you have the same canvas with the same paints on the same type of day and the next day it'll be a horrible painting. <laughs> But today it's going to be great and the, the possibilities are endless and I think that's um, both the best and worst thing about being an artist. The purpose for my artwork is just to create and I think that shows in the, the series. All these hands are creating and I'm creating these hands. If people interpret my artwork differently, that's fine. Um, this, these paintings are just from my point of view. This is, this is something that I see that I want to blow up um, to these sizes so that you can see it. And if you see something different in a painting that I've done, then I think that's great. That's awesome. And that's part of what art is all about is it's open to interpretation. The advice I would give to an aspiring artist is something that Maury Sendak told me uh, a while ago, and that's just to, to keep creating. He told me to draw every day. Um, we weren't friends, but <laughs> I met him at a book signing, and, um, and, and he's right. I mean, when he said that to me, I, I was taken aback because I just thought, well, that's so simple. Really? Just draw every day? That's of course, like why wouldn't you? But then life gets in the way and um, creating every day is really, it's really helped me and it's helped my artwork to, uh, to go to the next level, to, to jump to the next level. And because um, if you think about it too much, if you think about your work, you're not actually creating work. So. So it's really about just creating the work, and the more work that you create, uh, the more the, the more amazing your work will be, and um, and then and in that creation, you're manifesting opportunities for yourself. So just keep drawing and painting and creating every day, and things will naturally fall into place. <laughs>